What is up, hotties? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time in Matthew Sponauer and Theo Ash. We have a great episode planned for you all today. We're going to, of course, talk about Game 4 of the NBA Finals. Talk about uh, some comments made by Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams about their new quarterbacks. Uh, Theo, I know you're very excited <laughs> for that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he talked about he talked about Rod. Devontae talk, talk, talked about Rod. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then uh, we have another NFL key trade cut for you guys, as well as a question of the week. If you want to submit your own question of the week, make sure you join the chalkboard. We have a channel sectioned out for questions of the week. We'll be picking some from there every single week. But before we get into that, Matthew, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing wonderful. No, I'm good. I'm fantastic. Uh, I got a new webcam for those watching on YouTube, and it's wow. I'm feeling real crisp today. I'm feeling <laughs> no longer crisp. in the void. I'm no longer in the void. <laughs> you know, yes. it's it's interesting. I always see comments it's like Theo having low audio and video quality is like a staple. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah so especially this... recently since i've been um i've been so travely oh. i've been ev- i've been everywhere yeah mr worldwide but make sure you guys subscribe to the youtube channel keep helping grow the podcast on all platforms and like i mentioned earlier join the chalkboard uh for more than just you know the question of the week we are talking about like during the nba during the nba finals we're talking about the finals in the chalkboard so make sure you join that Link is in the bio of all of our social platforms. But let's talk about some basketball, shall we? Is it uh, I, I hear, I have a question for you guys, actually. Is it fair to say that Draymond gets a little too much leeway? With, <laughs> I thought you were giving what? him leeway right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying like on the court. Do you think he is allowed to do too much? Oh yeah, know, he's fifteen fouls right now. Like it's he's fouled out. Like, well, <laughs> he's fouled out multiple times. Like, and and it feels like he could foul more. <laughs> he could be I called mean, for even more. Yeah, and that that's any. I don't know if he's necessarily like an, under the label of a star player, but he definitely does. You know, get away with some stuff. But who doesn't? I don't. I don't think that's my main number one concern with what's going on right now. Yeah, Draymond obviously. The the offense has been completely brutal, and I've I've seen some people wondering like, what did he do at practice in the KD years? Because he used to be all right at it, and then he's just regressed so heavily. I said that he he's got the finesse of a shotgun at the rim, and <laughs> I think it's a valid question. Like, what on earth happened? Like, why is he, he was... so bad at like finishing and like just his. And he had a Ben Simmons moment. He really did. Like with Vucevic mm-hmm. kind of playing off of him, he was about seven feet in front of the basket, just like go flip it up there, put it in. And he, he made a pass. And I, it instantly reminded me of like the Ben Simmons, like obviously I mean, passed got- up dunk and Draymond was doing it in the last game. And it's not that he's, you know, getting away with too much here. I, I think the biggest story with Draymond is just like Curry needs some help offensively and Draymond simply cannot give it. So that's right. where I'm at with him. Draymond is like, at least in his prime, 2016, he was not a dud offensively at all. He was shooting. I mean, that game seven of the Cavs. Yeah, he had yeah. 21 in the first half in that game yeah. seven in 2016. He was nice, you know, and he could he always move the ball real well, too. So he was, he was a, a plus offensive player by a pretty wide margin. And now, yeah, you're seeing him just completely fall apart here. Um, and even... I agree that's like once KD came on the team, he sort of took a step back offensively. But man, dude, like this is this is another level from even where he's been earlier this season. And I still luckily, think, yeah, oh, go ahead, Matt. Oh, I was just saying, luckily, Steph's been on his A game or this would they'd be in serious trouble. Yeah. And speaking of Steph, I mean, I, I've had him as my goat point guard for a while. I truly would take like Steph over anybody in terms of point guards even magic even magic i just think like wow like what he does as a shooter like not only being the greatest shooter of all time but being the greatest shooter of all time by like like two or three times as good as the next best shooter like i i like ray allen is great but he doesn't contort his body and and create on his own the three-point shots that steph curry can and the fact that steph curry beat his three-point record in like 
what half the games it's something crazy like that like it's just not even he's just not in the same stratosphere as everyone else as a shooter and i just think that's the most valuable thing and i mean you saw it in the last game and it's been my kind of thing why i think boston can win this series is because i don't think curry has much offensive help outside of himself really outside of maybe pool occasionally uh pool had a decent game in game four i thought especially in the first half but like the 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 shots that steph can create is just ridiculous and he's not a bad he's like one of the best finishers in the league as well people always talk about kd is like the great greatest scorer of this era but i i think it's steph i really do um maybe not in terms of like how deep his bag is or, you know, he's a six foot 10 guy with an unguardable, you know, mid range game. But like in terms of putting points up on the board, like give me Steph over just about Versatility anyone ever. Versatility is probably a little overrated. I'd rather have one thing that you can't stop. Right. I'd rather right. be the best okay. at one thing, honestly. Yes. Curry, beyond. It's like, like, and being a score, being a, like a talented score and, and, and you know, like a talented dribbler, that's cool. But you know, LeBron's out here going for a scoring title and he's not, doesn't have like the deepest bag or whatever. And so right. I, I, I agree. I think Curry probably is up there as far as the best scores of this generation. I do think that he has, the Warriors are weird. It's not that he has no help. It's that he doesn't have a real second star. But yeah. I think any given night, you're probably not going to go out there with, you know, like Wiggins is, is not bad and Poole no. is not bad and Clay can have good games. Like, there's there's a lot of there's Looney a lot has of been good there. yes i yes yes i'm saying it's not exactly steph is doing this with absolutely no help because the warriors are a great team um they move the ball real well they're well coached and all of that uh it's just like against boston and that defense like one thing that could be the warriors downfall is that is that lack of offense outside no, of steph 100%. I, but steph is yeah that's just what i'm saying not that steph is like absolutely no help right. that this is like 2018 lebron where he's just dragging bombs. but it's, it's not Harrison. super How, far off it's not like i, th- I think it's you think it's crazy i think i think, it's I, think, I, think it's I think it's pretty, pretty nuts i think the other thing is that like fair defensively that 2018 was bad fair as, yes as far as i remember <laughs> fair. like that team the the gap between like if you're saying like the third best player on on the Warriors is like wiggins or jordan Poole. We're, we're talking about like 36 year old Kyle Corver is like the third best player on that, <laughs> on that. Cleveland. I was Probably like, not, George, George like, Hill. Yeah. Like, like George, <laughs> like granite, like I, 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 I don't want to make this about LeBron. And that's why I feel like it's so weird to make that comparison. It's like, just, I, I, I see some Curry fans doing it and some other, you know, and then some LeBron pages pushing back and whatever. I feel like it's such a disservice to try to compare these. Well, you know, Curry is playing with an, you know, a totally different situation with an entirely different built team against an entirely different opponent. It's like, dude, it's just, <laughs> they're just two different things. It's okay. Yeah. I saw someone on Twitter try and mi- make the case that uh, if Curry were to like win this finals and get a finals MVP, that he would, it would be between him and MJ for the greatest basketball player of all time. <laughs> yeah. If you, <laughs> I, I, um, I'm afraid I can't agree with that. But. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised after the game, I I had a very unpopular tweet where I asked people who they thought was better all time, Kobe or Curry. And people were really mad that I'd even asked that question because I think the Kobe fans were mostly mad at that. I think it's a more valid question, but, you know, I don't know. It, this is big for Curry's legacy. He's got a really it, big. though. But he has not, like, he needs to be the best player in a series in the finals that he wins. He needs to, like, and you can argue that he was in 2017 and 2018, but not getting that finals MVP is killer. This is where it's just, like, he is just taking over. He is obviously the best player on the court. If he can bring this one home, he's got to have that finals MVP. Um, Yeah. It's just... Which I think is a little silly for his career. I, I I truly think like even if Curry loses this series, like Boston, like Jason Tatum turns it on and and Boston wins, like mm-hmm. I don't know that that Finals MVP doesn't really like matter to me in in the pantheon of of Steph Curry. When I look at him, it's like oh, but he never won a Finals MVP. I I, I really don't even think I like it's funny to say like as a slander joke, but like truly we know that the Warriors are not even close to a dynasty without Steph. Like, right. We all know that they're not winning any, I don't think they're winning any rings without Steph. So 
it just doesn't really matter to me. Like he's the most valuable player of that whole dynasty. Six finals in eight years. Steph is the biggest reason why that happens. So that that argument and that finals MVP to me isn't even like super important to his career. But yeah, that would be like the crown jewel would be winning this series without a lot of help and, and playing out of his mind like he has. But um, let's talk about this from the Boston side. Like Matt, what do you what do you think needs to like happen for them to to win two more and 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 win this series? <laughs> they need to have a more consistent offense. They're off <laughs> that last stretch of the game for them where they were up and then they just like put up a bunch of threes and that was a tough way to go out. Yeah. That was a tough way to go out. And I, I think that when Boston comes out and they play with with the energy on defense, like after game two, Draymond was super physical and they matched that the next game and it was awesome, dude. Like that's when they do that, they can they can defend this Warriors team, even with Curry, because they just don't have that like real second star. They can defend these guys, but offensively, I think Tatum's struggling. I think Wiggins is doing a really good job of defending Tatum, at least from what I tell. I never I feel like I always think this guy's defending another guy good, and then I go look at like the defensive coverage stats and he's like, actually he's shooting 50%. But um I think I mean he hasn't been shooting well. Um Yeah, I mean, he was under 35% in the last And I game. think that has a lot to do with the fact so. that, you know, the Warriors are challenging. They're sending a lot of pressure at Tatum, and I think that um it's not necessarily him just like playing bad but the warriors are challenging him to move the ball more that's and you've seen in the games where he's moved the ball better they win so that's what i think they need to do that's their number one concern just move the ball well don't settle for dumb shots they're too prone to that and the warriors don't do that quite as much yeah i mean uh, jalen brown is been the the mvp for the celtics so far i'd say and and last game he was especially hitting some crazy circus shots so you know, Jalen Brown can't be the, the best player on a finals winning team. I think if you're like, they're not winning this game, this, this series, if, if Tatum continues his slump. So yeah, I, I think, I also think that's what it comes down to. Robert Williams has been incredible. Their defense has not been like, yeah, I was about to say Robert Williams has been, it hasn't been horrible at all. So, you know, I guess the drop coverage on Curry, Curry occasionally is uh a little questionable, but I, I do think that it probably gets a little overblown. I mean, no, I thought yeah. they were, oh yeah. <laughs> like that's not all they're doing guys Jesus, like you know yeah. uh curry was hitting some pretty tough shots and good defense in the last game i i saw it with my own two eyes it wasn't all just drop coverage oh. but yeah i i still think they have a very real shot um i'll actually be in san francisco <laughs> well, yeah. here yes Ooh. for game five but i'm not obviously going to the are game are you taking your camera yes i will be taking so my camera we... and mic so <laughs> i don't even know but yeah, I I I still feel pretty good about Warriors in seven, which was my original take. I I don't think the Warriors have this in the bag by any means, um, just because Tatum has been in a slump and it's still two two. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It, it I think this is shaping up to be just a fantastic finals with all the games being pretty pretty good so far. I think except for game two. I mean that that was the prediction from the jump right i had celtics in seven you guys had warriors in seven we're like yeah i mean this is gonna be a good finals <laughs> if we're if we're all predicting it to go to seven. Oh yeah like yeah i mean and we're getting exactly both teams have a win at home both teams have a win on the road so i mean i don't really see any clear advantage here at this point the last thing i want to say is like i think marcus smart is another celtic who has to you know he's been a a positive on defense still, I think, but like the shot selection, I think late in games, you know, he's got this reputation as kind of the glue guy and all that. And yet sometimes he just will do some really dumb ass shit. <laughs> I don't know. How to... And it's like, as someone who is like supposed to be the like steadying hand and the, the crafty smart vet, I would like to see him sometimes make a smarter play in crunch you time. See I thought Marcus smart to be, smarter yes i do and and he'll make them occasionally it's just like in crunch it's happened a couple times in these playoffs where i've been like marcus you did not need to jack up that three okay that's that's all i gotta say i was, i think like i'd like to see him be a little bit more of a steadying hand instead of some of these moments where the celtics fall apart he's a he's a part of them so i'd, I'd like to see that from him but that's that's my last thing about the celtics fair enough so Celtics yeah, and seven is the, uh, is the uh, consensus. The I best think thing about here. this series is that the series is always over after every single game for the team that just won. <laughs> um, 
it's that's the way that it goes for every series, but particularly with this one, it's funny. It's like, well, uh, Warriors won by fifteen. Guess they're winning the series. Guess it's over, and then the Celtics Guess will it's win over. the next one. And now the Warriors <laughs> are going to have to win three of the next four. It's over for the Warriors. Oh, now it's tied. <laughs> Celtics don't have the firepower. Yeah, that doesn't Moment- sound as Momentum's cool when you say that side. the Celtics have to win two of the next four. Like it's really not that crazy of a. <laughs> Of a stat, to be completely honest, um, uh, we have the Celtics have to win two straight. <laughs> not but, yet. Anyway, not yet. You know, you know what else is crazy though? What? Uh, prize picks. And how easy they make daily fantasy. You're right, Theo. Listen, I knew it. Like prize picks offers more NBA props than any other DFS operator. They offer every player and stat category you can think of. You just pick two to five players and an over-under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry. And it's just you versus the projected numbers. Theo, do you have a an MLB player for me? Uh, well, let's go with Gary Sanchez. I think he's still in the league. What was the first name? Gary? G- Gary. Just Gary? <laughs> Gary just Sanchez? Gary Sanchez. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, prize picks allows for mixed sport entries. So, for example, you could take the over on Robert Williams and the under on Gary Sanchez. Or maybe you flip it and take the over on Gary Sanchez. Oh, he's but on the Twins now. Good for him. He's on the Twins? Yes. I have a twin shirt. Should I, should I go put it on? No. <laughs> <laughs> we should finish this episode. <laughs> nah, I'm going to go put it up. You know, users that deposit and use our promo code will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Just be sure to use the promo code stay hot so don't hesitate to check out prizepicks.com or their mobile app and use the code stay hot to that download the app go to prizepicks.com because prizepicks makes daily fantasy super easy i think we should talk about some football Um, you know where you know where the twins are from right you know where they play how do you think i got a minnesota twin shirt i don't know but you have <laughs> you have not known some crazy baseball when i things, when i so went I to when ask. i went to minnesota i visited the twin stadium okay so you know it's i in... went to the twin stadium and i went to um the viking stadium okay okay just that's making sure <laughs> just making jersey no making absolutely yeah, that's sure. how i got my treadwell jersey i got my treadwell jersey and i got the twin shirt you you didn't know where the philly you didn't know the phillies were a baseball team like two episodes <laughs> ago so yeah <laughs> okay i'll give you i'll give you that you can't act like he's crazy for thinking you might not know where the twins are but why would i have a twin shirt Maybe you got it from a thrift store or something. I don't know. You've got a lot of different jerseys from random places. No, I don't. Yes, I have you a do. Tom Brady jersey. Yes. I have two Josh Cribbs jerseys. Yes. I have a Laquan Treadwell. Yes. Yeah, yes, the exactly. Treadwell jersey is awesome. That's not that crazy. I have a Darren Fox jersey. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You yes. said Darren Fox, Laquan <laughs> Treadwell, and two Josh Cribbs jerseys. I don't have like, that many crazy jerseys. I've got a Patriots Brady. I've got Cribs. I've got Fox. I've got – those are all crazy. That's exactly what I mean. Anyway. And then I have, I have Baker. Oh, and I have a I have a Browns Braylon Edwards. You have Brown. You have Trey Young, <laughs> which I guess isn't that crazy, but for a Cavs What's fan, not? it might be. Do you have a Cavs jersey? <laughs> I don't. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I I technically do, but I think Matt has it or Zach has it. I don't think I, oh. I think Zach the has vintage have the it. vintage LeBron. I'm holding I'm holding on to the West Virginia the Bron- Geno Bron- Smith jersey. jersey. The Bron Bron jersey. I do have a Bron Bron. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. It was it was six dollars at a Goodwill. It was and it's like a, a vintage LeBron jersey. They need to bring like, back yeah. their like wine and gold vintage jerseys that they played in, in within LeBron's first stint. I think those are going to be their next vintage jerseys or something. And it should be fair enough. It should be. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the one the one Tyree kill the one they call Tyree kill and what he said? Yes. Matt, what are your thoughts? I, well, I mean, partially, you know, what is he supposed to say? I guess I I didn't really see it. Did someone ask him who's more accurate or did he just like randomly bring up that two is more accurate? I think he was asked, who would you rather have between Mahomes and two? Mahomes. Like, you can't say that. He was like, and they they were like, you know, do you, do you like, would you rather get it like dead in the numbers and be able to take it 70 or 
be it or like those like long balls where you have to track it midair. Right. So he they were kind of setting him up. Um, and he was like, Oh, well, you know, you know, Mahomes is you know, Mahomes is great, but I kinda like Tua's like accuracy a little bit. I more. think I think that was a very fair and reasonable response. Cause if he was just like, Yeah, I think Tua is like better, like you know, it's that's hard to get away with. But to say I think Tua is like style of of you know the way that he gets me the ball is maybe a little bit better for me. Yeah, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty solid answer. Um, because there's definitely some truth to like Mahomes struggling with accuracy every once in a while. I mean, I remember vividly when we were watching him uh, against the Chargers. He had that one throw that was just like straight in the dirt randomly. Um, so it's like <laughs> if 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 Mahomes was like perfectly accurate, he would be like the best player ever, undoubtedly. Um, and he might be anyway. So, um, I, th- I think that was I mean, a fair Ma- answer by, I, I mean, I don't agree. I obviously think Mahomes is better, but what the hell is he supposed yeah. to say? I think that my problem with it is like, he seems to go the extra mile almost to slander Mahomes, where I think he also said after that, he said, Mahomes is going to struggle it's going to be a, he's going to have some bad days without the cheetah is what he said. And he insinuated that Mahomes is, Oh, gonna, I didn't hear that. <laughs> oh, well that's to me. I think the crazy thing that he said is like, two is more accurate and Mahomes is going to struggle without me. And to me that, I mean, there's a lot of diva wide receivers out there, but I think he's definitely a couple times throughout the off season insinuated that he made Mahomes or he made the chiefs offense. And that's why Chiefs fans have kind of turned on him a little bit and been like, well, Tyreek, here are all the times you dropped a a game winning pass from Mahomes or or a long pass from Mahomes. Like there's really a lot of animosity right now between Chiefs fans and and Tyreek. And and like Devontae had a similar thing where he was like, you know, honestly, Derek Carr is right there as, you know, as talented as as Rodgers. And that kind of I don't think that one's crazy. I think that's I mean. I think that's fair to say. It's wrong, but talent, talent wise, yes, talent wise, (laughs) it was just like I think Derek Carr is a very like a damn good. Next to you, I look like a Derek Carr hater. I like (laughs) Derek Carr, dude, but like he's not, he's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Aaron Rodgers, but if we're talking just like the ability to like get the ball down yeah, the like, field, yeah, yeah, no, Rodgers yes. is and, 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 zip, and zip the and zip the ball into who tight, has like, it's been like just straight power. It's Rodgers is better. Rodgers is one of the all the yeah, leagues Rogers, like Rogers all time better, great. Talents. But like, I don't, I don't think it's like perhaps the most talented that, player in the the history of football is. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that. I crazy. do. I think it's that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Rodgers has won two straight MVPs. He, yeah, yeah. Rodgers is a better quarterback. I'm not. I'm not like disagreeing with you. Rodgers is by far a better quarterback. Like we're talking about like a top two quarterback versus maybe like the thirteenth. Rodgers is a guy who like when you talk about the Rodgers versus Brady debate all time. The, what people will say about him is like, yes, Rodgers is the most talented quarterback of all time, but. You'd rather have Brady because he's got the clutch gene and reads things better and makes better decisions. Like the, it is like a well-known fact that Aaron Rodgers is like th- him and Mahomes are like the most talented quarterbacks to ever yeah. touch a football. But like, and you're saying Derek Carr is right Carr, there. Derek Carr, <laughs> I'm just saying Derek, Derek Carr, Carr needs can, to be sling it. No, he I'm can't. Just saying Derek Not Carr like Rodgers. Would, no, you say, would you say that Derek Carr is more talented than like a Tom Brady? Like in terms of raw yes. talent, no, no, yes. God, no, nope. Yes. Derek Carr more talented? No, yes. he's not. Not even close. More talented? Where does, okay, where does Derek Carr rank among talent? <laughs> Derek Carr was a second <laughs> round pick, dude. He was a second round pick. He does not have. He is okay. not a Rogers. Toolsy. Rogers Lamar, was only Lamar picked Jackson like ten was, spots above. Lamar where Jackson. Derek Carr he was, was not a. Deal. Lamar Jackson was almost. Teddy a Bridgewater went before him. He's not a toolsy <laughs> quarterback. Teddy Bridgewater did go before him. That's. He's, I'm not saying <laughs> that's he's a damning. I'm just saying in terms of. I'm just saying, like, in terms of, like, arm talent. No, he's not an all-time great arm yes. talent. No, he is not. I didn't say he was an all-time Dude, great if he's arm, arm talent. Well, if he's Aaron right Rogers. there, yes, he is. <laughs> Rodgers has, like, the – if you're talking about the greatest I'm arm talent in history. I'm just saying you, it, 
I'm just saying, if you were to like tier arm talent in the league right now, he would be like tier I think two or three. Arm than everyone else. <laughs> it would be like Allen Herbert. Like he does not have crazy it would be arms. Allen Herbert. It would be Allen Herbert Rogers and Mahomes in tier one, and then in tier two, I think it would be like. Derek okay, well, if he's clearly a tier below I... Rogers, like. But I think that's like all you're thinking enough. of is that one throw versus Washington. I know what you're exactly the throw that makes you say this. It's the one throw against Washington at the end of the game. <laughs> I don't even know what throw you're, what throw the throw which... against Washington where he I you tweeted about it a couple times. He it was like <laughs> it was a crazy. It was a really good throw. It was like sixty yards in the air and it hit the guy in the numbers. But it's I've been a fan, I've been a fan of Derek Carr since he came out of college. Matt knows this is true. He is he not on Derek time. Carr for a long time. <laughs> but that does not does make not, Aaron Rodgers. I'm afraid that does not make him Aaron Rodgers. That throw doesn't. Make him Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying he's Aaron Rod. I'm just saying that's like, like pretty specific. You are saying he's saying he said <laughs> anyway. I'm just saying like he's not your he's teammate. Only one tier below. He thinks <laughs> he's on the team. This, you don't have to do this. Devonte <laughs> has to do this. That's the thing. Devonte has to do this. You can't say, oh, Rodgers is a tier above. You know, car. I, like these things. Like, it's no big deal. And Uzoma, got, like Bengals fans were mad at Uzoma for being like the young talent here in 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 new york on the jets is like as good as i've ever been around and all the bengals fans are like fuck you uzoma for betraying us the bengals are the best talent and it's like yes dude but also he is getting paid like millions of dollars from this team and there's he's going in front of the media and he's saying this is the greatest thing you know that's what you get paid to do so none of these things are big deals i do think that tyreek is like slightly more He's playing. He's definitely for, Tyree Kill. Definitely is like he's pushing a little bit of an agenda. He's, more, is he's where, like, pushing a little bit guys. of an agenda. I, I agree. I didn't realize that. Devontae was and, and Rogers just went golfing together. They like are clearly like yeah. still fine, but Tyreek and and Mahomes aren't going golfing together anymore. Sadly, the moral of this story is like if if you know Stay Hot was all of a sudden given a million dollar deal by. Like anyone, <laughs> we're gonna push the narrative. If, yeah, if Matt, right. if Matt got replaced by uh, a dude named uh, Huel Jinkley, Huel Jinkley is the new po- third <laughs> podcast, and you know he got he got fired or he left. He quit. Matt quit. He left, and Huel Jinkley is the third podcast member. You know we're not gonna be like to Huel Jinkley's face. <laughs> I miss Matt so much. <laughs> He's, you're okay. I hate you, Huel no... Jinkley. You're no Matt. Huel... That's just like basic. We're gonna get. We're gonna get. A That's DM basic human decency. We're not gonna get a DM from a Huel Jinkley. I'm afraid. <laughs> Huel Jinkley. I think the odds of that are quite low. Huel... Um. Hey, yo, fuck Huel, Huel Jinkley. Jinkley. Man, I miss Matt. Like during the podcast. What do you think of Huel Jinkley? Like, uh, some we get a question on on the chalkboard. What do you think of Huel? <laughs> fuck you. <Huel. laughs> We're not saying that. We're we're being nice to Huel. Huel Jinkley's no map, but we're not going to say that publicly. Now, if we said, now Theo and I, Theo and I might have a group. Right, on we the might. Side. If we he said like, we you. love Huel Jinkley and whatever he's Matt's going to fail without us, then that's messed up, and that might actually be like right. Matt has something to be mad about. But just because we're we're slandering, we're we're not going to slander Huel Jinkley pu- publicly if he's the new podcast co-host, right? So anyway. When they replace me with Huel Jinkley, what? just Huel... know they don't mean anything when, they say. When, Huel not Jinkley. if, when. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I wonder uh, anyway. what do you think is going to happen with Tyreek Hill and, and Waddle and Tua? Like, how do you see that playing out? You know, I just watched the 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 Tua. I did my interception review on Tua, mm-hmm. and I I did think that the play calling was was pretty rough everything was rough i can't believe they got as many wins as they did next year like the the concepts were a little weird and the offensive line was bad like i i just didn't think it was a very cohesive smooth offense at all i think under mcdaniel it's gonna look better i do think there's just gonna be a little bit more it's gonna be a little bit more of a well-oiled machine Mm -hmm. but at the same time you know, Waddle was supposed to be the closest thing to Tyreek that we've seen. And, you know, he had like 110 catches for 900 yards, right? And if if Tua hasn't, his footwork is bad. Like Tua's footwork is bad and his There's... mechanics are kind of bad. And it's like, man, you've been in Bama for like three years. You've been working there. 
and you've been in the NFL for two and your, your footwork is still bad. Like, you know, there's too many mouths to feed. It's going to be run heavy and to, they have a bad quarterback. I think like, I, I just don't think Tyreek is going to have the year that he, he thinks he's going to have. Um, I, I just don't think it's, it's, it, it's really the offense might be to, better, to but like as far as individual production goes, I just don't know. I think it like when when you're looking at like routes on air, and it's just like Tua is only throwing to Tyreek on this play, right? They're just practicing slant routes or whatever. I think then it's really easy to be like, wow, look how accurate Tua is. Um, but you know when the pads are on and. You know, you have pressure and you have to have good footwork and right. you have to read the field. And there's a lot of there's a lot going on at once that might not always. If, if you can only be out. great when everything is going right, you're not great. Right. And that's mm-hmm. the thing with Tua where it's like people are like, oh, once they fix the offensive line and the play caller and the and the wide receivers are great. Like then Tua, you'll see who Tua really is. It's like, I don't know if that's true. Right. Because we saw, you know. We've seen quarterbacks surrounded by greatness look and put up pretty good numbers, whether that be Garoppolo or Baker or Goff. Like we've seen it a million times. Um, so I, I think like maybe in a vacuum, like Tua can hit the layups with a little bit more accuracy than Mahomes can because Mahomes is trying to do too much. But like when things break down, man, and when he's rolling out of the pocket and there's pressure and and Tyreek is over 20 yards down the field. He's going to miss those throws. Like two is not him. hitting those, sadly. So, you know, right. not only like Tyreek is wrong, I think. Like, even if like I, I just don't think <laughs> and there might be numbers with like completion percentage or completion percentage over expected where where Tua could maybe be as good as Mahomes, but like man, like when it really comes down to it, you want Mahomes throwing you the football, obviously. He's more accurate, he's more he's yeah. better everything. Um, I so, um I think that's weird the way that people look at quarterbacks. Any other position, obviously, like the guys around you affect how, how you perform. But you would never say like this wide receiver who sucked last year only sucked because of his quarterback, or only sucked yeah. because of the situation. And that's, that's a case for every single position except for quarterback, where we can accept that. Except it's also supposed to be like the most important and like most valuable position. So I theoretically, like it should be the least affected by everyone around them, right? And it, it doesn't really work out that way. Yeah, no, it is. It is. I mean, we've seen Herbert with a horrible offensive right. line his rookie year go crazy. We saw Burrow last year with a horrible offensive line go crazy. So, right. you know, Tua has a horrible offensive and he just hasn't flashed like he hasn't even flashed. So that's your problem. Uh, and as far as wide receivers with bad quarterbacks go, Matt, I know Robbie Anderson has been grumpy this entire offseason. He's oh, threatening yeah, to dude. retire. It's been ridiculous. Uh, he's hated on the mascot he has a problem with absolutely everything about the panthers organization and i'm not saying that he is necessarily wrong because i do too (laughs) however um you know going out and making you know statement he basically just like come on said like donald sucks like yes but can you yeah not like post about it can you not say that like baker would be the worst option in the world probably be better yeah he's like yeah, I mean, we're 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 over here just talking about like how Devonte and Tyreek, you know, they have to, you know, they have to kind of talk about these guys in a positive light that they're now with, right? But you know, Robbie Anderson's over here doing the opposite, and everyone's like, "Bro, why is Robbie and Anderson like, acting like, it's like I'm thinking about retiring? Like, what problem are we, here? Like, like, what is what are we posting that for? You know, that's how I feel a little right. bit. I, I don't, I, I don't... just. And just, and especially when it's like, well, then they might trade for Baker, and he says, "Hell nah." It's like, well, okay, <laughs> like Here's... things aren't always going to be perfect all the time, you know. <laughs> and just like I'm thinking about retiring, he had a he called the mascot dumb. He was like, he called it a dumb bear. <laughs> Sir, like, dude, come on! And it's like, dude, <laughs> he really, I hope he's he in a good really place. Really hates playing for the Panthers, I guess. And maybe it's it's always tough to judge players like this because you don't know what's going on internally. And with the Panthers, you kind of have to assume that it's like really horrible. But um, I don't know. I think being so public about it probably doesn't help anybody or help anything. Um, and it's like, dude, you caught four hundred right. yards last year. You also didn't play that well, so 
Exactly. You know, <laughs> but that's a reason why you, you know, yeah, we, a public we, public support also prevents awkwardness in a locker room and, you know, just helps overall cohesion if everyone's like bought in. Right. And then when someone's just like obviously angry and obviously not bought in, it, everybody's been in a room or a situation or had to work on a team project where one person is just like, whoa, this will never, uh, this, you stink. I, I stink. I don't want to do this. <laughs> and it's like, bro, like, yes, we're all going through it keep your chin up and just like deal with it. <laughs> right. But obviously again, you don't know exactly yeah. what, what Robbie Anderson is going through. Uh, but still it, it does appear like there's, there's a difference between a bad court. On one hand, there's Tyreek with a bad quarterback, although albeit he hasn't played with him yet. Who's saying glowing things about him on the other. There's Robbie Anderson. Who's playing with a bad quarterback. Who's being a grump. And if they ask him if you'd rather play with Sam Darnold or Mahomes, he'd probably laugh and just like, say like, please trade me. I'd love to play with Mahomes. You'd rather have a wide receiver saying the first thing than the second thing. I think so. Yeah. I, I wonder if he's trying to get I traded agree. here a little bit. You Cause know, he's got a nice contract. I'd like, I would be stunned if he actually like was considering retirement. He's making millions and millions and millions, but I bet you he does want to play with a better quarterback. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. everyone wants to play with a good quarterback. Like I remember in flag football, I would. <laughs> I could Who never your get the football. <laughs> I was always mad. Are you ready to um, denounce him publicly? What? <laughs> That's I don't know if I am, but like, I mean, he he would he he apologized to me over flag. He was like, football. man, that was that I was. I could my throw five time. interceptions. I'm not sorry. He was like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, I can't believe I never, I didn't get you the ball more. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay, man. I forgive you. <laughs> Robbie Anderson takes so, notes. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Robbie Anderson. <laughs> but you know what we are publicly fans of here at Stay High? Manscaped. Our good <laughs> friends over at Manscaped, and they just brought back two for two. two, for two. I should, I could Theo's just look at the rundown. Today. Theo, are you, are you butter? Theo, are butter. you butter? <laughs> he's on a roll <laughs> we're big fans of our big fans of our friends over at manscape they just brought back the ultra smooth package it's time to stop drop and order this premium shaving kit everyone knows by now that the lawnmower 4.0 is the best electric shave for your balls but if you're looking for a closer shave to go bare down there then the ultra smooth package is the perfect set it's time to shave that bush of yours and get right to the roots with this discount just for you. Get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the code STAY HOT. The Ultra Smooth Package is specialized, is a specialized groin shaving kit to help you buff, protect, and smooth your most sensitive areas. I'm taking, I'm talking the crop shaver, the crop. These are all tongue twisters, man. They all end with like, er. <laughs> I'm talking the crop shaver razor, the crop exfoliator, the crop gel. Man, you no longer have to, you know, borrow your lady's razor for that precise trim. So again, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code stay hot at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code stay hot at manscaped.com. Smooth out the fellas with the relaunch of the ultra smooth package from the fellas at Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. They really will. And now it's time for keep trade cut. Theo, uh, would you like to announce who we're All right. Well, we got a wide receiver episode and or a wide receiver one, and it is Tyreek, who we just talked about, mm -hmm. Stefan Diggs, and Justin Jefferson. So three elite wide receivers. Guys, who are you keeping trading or keeping benching and cutting? Because I think trade insinuates you might trade a younger one with more value, but I digress. Keep, it, it, we're, bench, we're ranking cut. them one through three. One through three. Start yeah. start bench cut. Yeah. However you want to like designate. <laughs> but anyway, what do you guys think? Who are you keeping trading and cutting between Tyreek, Jefferson, and Diggs? I don't know. <laughs> well, thanks for listening, everybody. Yeah, no, it's, it's like, that does it for maybe, another perhaps. Maybe keep Jefferson, trade Tyreek, cut Diggs. Maybe that's what I'll go with. That's what, that's what my gut is telling me. I think Jefferson's kind of due for like, I mean, he's already had a pretty, he's already like had a couple of pretty legendary seasons, but he could totally put up, he, he could do some ridiculous stuff with how young he is. Um, I think Tyreek's skill set's super rare, and that's why I have him above Diggs. And then 
Diggs is great, but I have him at three. Yeah, I mean, if we're we're picking between like three of the best like wide receivers in the NFL, like these are three top five receivers. Um, I would say Justin Jefferson is probably the guy I'm, I'm rolling with to start, just because you know he's been putting up legendary seasons, and his quarterback is Kirk Cousins. Um, <laughs> like we, I mean, there's the one sound bite of like he doesn't get the football in the end zone, and he's like Kirk. Kirk, throw the, throw the effing ball, Kirk. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, throw the fucking, yeah. So it's like, you know, Justin Jefferson is dealing with some shit, but like he's not really he's though. I mean, regardless. I mean, Kirk Cousins is like fine, right? But if you're, but if we're talking about, you know, Stefan Diggs has had Josh Allen and you know Tyreek's had Mahomes, but I mean Tyreek also had like Alex right. Smith for. For a season, but like, you know, but then they got Mahomes, and everyone was like, "Oh, this dude's like legendary." Uh, so I, I think I would go Jefferson, Tyreek, Diggs. Yeah, Matt, you're you're probably you're probably right. You're probably right. All right, so you guys are both on starting Jefferson, benching, benching Tyreek, cutting Diggs. Yeah, I enjoy guys with superpowers. I think like someone who can do something that no one else can is the most valuable thing you can get. And that's why I always kind of lean Tyreek just because he's kind of got uh, a gear that maybe no one else in like the history of the NFL has. And it's like, yes, there's some drop issues there, but you know, overall, like in the bills game, right. That I, there were yeah. so many game winning touchdowns. I can't even remember which game winning touchdown it was. I think it was the one to bring it to overtime where he caught that crossing route and, and outran everybody to the end zone. It's like D- Jefferson's not doing that. And Diggs isn't doing that. And so that's why I, I I don't even know if he'll have the best season of the three, but like I'm still taking Tyreek to start, even though I think that's going to production wise age poorly. Maybe. Then I'm I'm taking Jeff. I think honestly Jefferson and Diggs are pretty close, um, but I'm going to take Jefferson just because I think it's it's kind of his his time a little bit more. I don't know if that makes mm-hmm. sense. It just kind of feels no, like it's, it's it's his time a little bit more. He's 23, kind of entering his prime. Um, and what he's done already is scary. He's been putting up absurd numbers too. Right. So it's like unreal route runner, good after the catch. Um, but but Diggs is right there with him. He he yeah. really is. Like he's yeah. an unreal route runner, and I also think he he is potentially even a little bit more of the the explosive athlete as well. Diggs and you know he returned punts early in his career. That's how. And he like after the catch, he's kind of got this kind of thicker frame he's a little bit more well built and, and I, twitchier. I, I think I, Diggs is like so underrated at like being able to break tackles I still think Diggs is like a tier one wide receiver I think a lot of people are are kind of not including him in that such in that conversation with Adams and and Jefferson and Cup but I think Diggs is absolutely right there I think all three of these guys are tier one and yeah, yeah I think Diggs is a little underrated right now but I'm I still with these two I'm still, I'm still probably cutting him sadly, but at any rate, yeah. I mean, we're talking about three really fast, really physical, great route runners. <laughs> like yeah, what? No. Like I don't know what else you want. So, so that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Uh, all right, I, I can't get mad at like Tyreek. Tyreek is a Tyreek is a dog. Yeah, I understand. And it's like, and this isn't any like slight to Diggs. No, it's not. It's, I, I truly think he's underrated. Um, I, lo- I love Diggs. Anyway, Matt, going back mm-hmm. to basketball, we got the Hornets oh, hiring a new coach, which I guess we got to talk about since you're a Hornets fan. I'm surprised we haven't talked about it already somehow, like when we were talking about the Warriors. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I mean, I'm I'm very pumped about it. I'm very I'm very optimistic about the Hornets. And I don't think that's biased or misplaced. I just think that they're doing a really good job right now. I think they've got their number one. I think they draft incredibly well. They've got a lot of assets this offseason to go get the center they need. And I like the Atkinson hire. Um, I I think Borrego maybe got a little bit too much of a pass, but it's like, I I agree that he was the type of coach that we needed, but the half court offense wasn't there. The defense wasn't there. It's like, you can't go into multiple playing games in a row and get crushed. Apparently the players didn't like him. I think Atkinson still gives you that like focus on player development, but he's a little bit more of a defensive mind. Maybe the half court offense will be better. Um, He's obviously, you know, not on bad terms right now um, with some of the young guys. And uh, 
he maybe won't have the problem of not playing a lot of the young guys that Borrego had. And I defend Borrego a little bit on that, but I agree that it was a problem. I think there's no reason the Hornets personnel is not that far away from being a good defensive team. I mean, you look at guys like LaMelo and Miles and yeah, they need a new center, but that's a known problem. If they fix that, I, I, I see mostly plus athletes. Like why wasn't, if the defense was struggling so much, why didn't JT Thor get more minutes? That was the one that just made no sense to me. It's like, you see McDaniels out there getting minutes over Thor, and it just made no, like, it, it, I couldn't explain it. Who? Um, <laughs> so it, it, it was just, seeing the young guys play more, I think they really do have a lot more talent defensively. Given LaMelo Ball, maybe more, you know, a little bit more keys to the car, if they can get off of Gordon Hayward's contract, they can have a max slot next offseason. I mean, they've got two draft that – Kai Jones and Book Knight are basically two first. We haven't even really seen play. I'm still super high on both of them. They have two more. Mitch Kupchak has like basically a perfect draft record with the Hornets at this point. So I think they're going to win 50 games. Really? Yep. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Wow. I think, well, I think put that, gonna... that would put them at like a they, – so they don't even have to get obliterated in the playing games because they're straight up going to play themselves out Be of it. Be a playoff team. I think that's – this is obviously like depending a little bit on what they do. Like if they make garbage moves, don't hold me to this. But if they can go and get just a reasonable center and have Kai Jones step up more, have a have a more uh, involved defense and get these guys going a little bit more and could ever, you know, ha- have some of these young guys take a step. I don't see why they couldn't. I really don't think it's that crazy. I mean, it, this, this team had a winning record with, you know, the worst starting center in the league and a terrible defense, they can they they can be seriously good. I think the ceiling is super high for these guys. And like, what happens if Book Knight turns out to be like great, or Kai Jones turns out to be great and reaches their ceiling? Because those guys are both dudes with super high ceilings. I, th- yeah. I think people underestimate how. Um, I mean, when we were when we were at summer league last year, I mean, both of those guys were playing. You talk about well. guys with superpowers. Kai Jones is is a little ridiculous. Like the athletes that both those guys are, are, are maybe saying superpowers this early is a little, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, when I say superpower, I mean I like know what you Steph mean, Curry's but... shooting or Giannis's athleticism. But like you but can like you do want to bet on athleticism. Like athleticism, yeah. betting on that is not a bad idea. At you just all. need you just need one of them to turn out, and they both seem to have like really good. I mean, this is also me buying into propaganda of like, oh, they're working out, oh, blah 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 blah. But they both seem to have the right mindset. I think with more playing time, I mean. Again, Mitch Kupchak has been – go look at his draft record. Not even with the Hornets, with the Lakers too. It's fantastic. If one of those guys turns out to be even close to what they could be, they're going to be ridiculous. If both of them do, they're going to be insane. I, I, so I'm, I'm very high on, on, on the Hornets right now. Yeah. I think that you're – I think that I would give the old coach some shit for not playing, you know, getting everybody involved. I think that that's always a bad idea. Even – it's like, why is this guy getting minutes? Why is this guy getting minutes? I, I think you do want to get – my coaching philosophy, if I was a basketball coach, is is trying to get everybody involved just because I think like that makes everybody practice harder, right? That helps their development if they know they're going to get minutes in a game, right, every week. Even if it's one or two, they want to make an impression. So yeah. you got from top to bottom, the entire roster is going to care a little bit more. The entire roster top to bottom is going to buy in a little bit more. And if what you're saying, like the old coach, like the players didn't love him. Not shocking to me if you don't if you only stick with a couple guys. Or like Thibodeau, I think has this problem as well, yes. where he where he plays like he just gets too set in like his guys, and like it it might maximize like you might have the best players out there all the time, right? And I get the mindset there where it's like we're well conditioned, we're just gonna have the best five guys out there for as much as possible, and that'll make us better than giving you know some bums minutes. But in terms of like practice, locker room chemistry, like creating depth. Like if someone were to get hurt, I think you got to give everybody some time, some playing time. And especially in, in basketball, when there's 82 games, it's like certainly you can find right. some opportunities to like give some dudes some time. So I, I always yeah. hate that as like when I see a coach, you know, not you right. know, give a guy a chance in a game or or I just think it's so kind Especially with a young team like the Hornets. That's what it doesn't make. Kai Jones, I'll give him a pass on. Kai Jones was really raw. I think we knew that when he got drafted. But Book Knight, like, going and signing Isaiah Thomas, a vet off the right. street, over playing your first round pick. And Book Knight, like, I don't, if you don't remember, like, he fell to us. We shouldn't have gotten yes. him. And it, it's just, 
it gets frustrating. And the Thor stuff, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, so I'm excited for Atkinson. Team culture with the Nets when he was there was awesome. I think team culture of the Hornets absolutely should be awesome. Um, I think these guys all fit each other's games really well, and they're, I think they're all a lot of fun. Like Kai Jones is maybe the perfect – if he can if he can get up to speed, he's the perfect type of center to run with this Hornets team. So I'm excited. I, I think they could be really good. Uh, but we got to see what they do. They have a lot of a lot of decisions yeah. to make. Well, for your sake, Matt, I hope. <laughs> yes. I hope they're good. I, I also do. <laughs> now it's time for uh, the question of the day from Chalkboard. You know, if you want to submit your own question of the day, make sure you join the Chalkboard channel. The link is probably, I think it's in the description of this YouTube. Uh, it's in my TikTok probably. Bio. Yeah. Yeah, it's in all of our TikToks. Um, you can just click the link and there it is. Join the talk. Join the talk. Yeah. talk to us is. directly. Talk to us it, directly. Talk to us. And I'll. S- and you know what? And and shameless plug here. You can also pre-save my album. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we have we have a channel where you can praise my album in in the praise the praise <laughs> the Bladen's album channel. But what is the question Bladen's of the album. day? All right, from seven foot PG. Seven foot point guard would be crazy, man. He says, who is your favorite player not on your favorite team? He doesn't specify if it's NFL or NBA, so I guess we could do either or both. And what made them your favorite player? So, Matt, I don't know if you... Bron well, Bron I know Matt. Bron Bron is man. the answer. It's Bron Bron. <laughs> Bron Bron because he's the chosen one. It's as simple as... I don't know, dude. <laughs> it's cho- been... My dad is like from Ohio, so I've I was I've always been cheering for the Cavs, and I just I'm cheering for LeBron to set every like ridiculous record and play with his son. I've been rooting for him for so long. I like Jokic a lot too, uh, and I like John Morant. Those would be my my three guys that I really like. Okay. The Osh. Uh, mine would be the one that I'm kind of most rooting for is Lamar Jackson. I think that I would love to like of anybody that I could see win a ring, not on the Green Bay Packers. Give me him uh, in the chalkboard. The other day I was arguing with a guy who ranked Lamar as the 28th best quarterback in the league and was defending that vehemently. And it's just like, man, all this talk about, you know, the league has figured him out. The league is, he's done he's not going to age well you know he's had that one and done mvp season and he's been bad since then i just think it's all untrue and i just want him to i just want him to shut everybody up i really I do agree. he's one of the most electric players one of my favorite players to watch just a blast to watch him on film and just in game and i just love to see i just love to see that herbert's another one he's one of my favorite to watch on film like the amount of ridiculous throws he hits is just like crazy to see I also have a big Vita Vea fan. That's another guy. I just, I love, I, I, I love that. to watch Vita Vea. Um, so those are definitely my three in the NFL. I think um, there's a couple more, some of my draft crushes, I'd say like uh, Kenneth Walker or Greg Russo, who I've defended um, Devonte Smith, whoever, whoever you want to say is like or Rashad Bateman. A lot of the guys I love in the draft, yeah. I'm, I'm really rooting for not because I like love their you know, love their personality or, or I think they're great. I just want to be right. Because you, you want to be right. Yeah. In the <laughs> NBA, I would say like uh, uh, Trey Young is up there. Um, Damian Lillard is up there for me. I, I love Dame. Trey Dude, is Theo also up there for like me. We, we're we're very guys. high on Trey at, at yeah. this podcast. Yes, we are. We all have the same favorite players. Uh, <laughs> well, well, Trey is, I mean, yeah, Trey has been a stay hot staple for a while. Matt, I remember like way when this podcast first started, uh, we were on a call and you were trying to figure out how to convince people that Trey Young was better than Ben Simmons. That's how anytime, that was a, that anytime was a big someone, debate. Just, anytime yeah, someone that. tells you like all this guy is better at is shooting, you know, like I've heard that. I remember that specifically from Curry versus Westbrook when that was a big debate like five years ago. Never trust that. Yeah. Never trust that. So, and I, I remember people saying the same thing about Simmons. But that that take, that take that that take turned into a whole. the The way that came to a head was gorgeous. Iconic. Yeah, it like was awesome. the way that it was iconic. But yeah, it was so bad that it almost makes you forget that at one time I feel like most people would have said Ben Simmons. Oh, I I think I ran a poll. You could probably yeah. 
I'll pro- I'll go back and look at the poll, but I think I think people picked Simmons, and the idea yeah, is I that well, so he was be- he's a better defender and he's a better passer. But the reality is is that you got to be the whole player. You can't just be a defender, just be a passer. Yeah, you got to you got to offer right, something as right. an efficiency. You can have sure, elite certain good. skills and not uh, you not have that add up to being necessarily an elite player. Tyrese Matt, speaking of the 76ers, Tyrese Maxey is a guy, Matt, that I always think of when I think of like, Oh players yeah, not dude, on he's the awesome. That you like, he's awesome. Trey Mann is one of my guys too. I've, I've, I have a, I have a fair Trey number Mann. of guys. I loved him in the draft last year and he was when the thunder picked him. Cause Presti's probably the best talent evaluator. Maybe he's up there. Uh, so when the thunder, Giannis, picked him, I felt very validated. Yeah. Giannis is also a guy I love. I'm not someone, yeah. you know, I'm I'm not a Bucks fan, but I am a Wisconsin sports appreciator, and he's just an awesome dude, a wholesome dude. So he's Lillard, probably the Giannis, number one guy I got to go see play. Yeah. So yeah, those are those are the ones who come to mind. Well, you guys, you guys took basically like Trey Young. I have a Trey Young jersey. You took Lamar, like Lamar is one of my favorite players, and I hate it because he plays for the Ravens. Like that was the one team I was like, in in the draft I was like, please Baltimore don't pick Lamar, <laughs> and they picked him, um, and I was so mad. So I would say I'm gonna try and like pick guys that you guys haven't picked. Darren Fox obviously in the NBA. Derek Carr obviously. Um, Derek Carr obviously. Der- Derek Carr is and Derek Carr is an, Derek Carr has been one of my favorites He's since he got drafted. Just as talented um, as Aaron Rodgers. He's my boy. One of the league. One of the greatest. <laughs> and, him and Teddy, one of the greatest the league listen, has the ever Browns seen. Took, <laughs> Derek Carr. The the Browns the Browns could have had Teddy Bridgewater or Derek Carr, so, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 heartbreaking that they they ended up with uh, Johnny Football. Hot take: I would have done the same draft. shit. All right, I would have taken Johnny Manziel. You would have taken Johnny yeah, Manziel there. I, I mean, I guess have. maybe the not I the character like concerns, Manziel. which and like he partied. Not even character. I did not think. I did not think nah, he, he was good. good. He was good in was college. Bad. Sadly, I would if he was like no, if his I mind he... was right. I would have taken Johnny Football like first overall. No, yeah, I would have. <laughs> this dude, this Johnny Manziel is everything that everyone thinks Lamar Jackson is. It's he wants to use his legs a ton, and then when he he has nothing to go to, he just throws it up. That's what everyone thinks. That's what thinks the book Lamar on Mahomes is. was, all right. Mah- he would have been Mah- if his mind was right. I would have and taken. That's, that's that's what Manziel no. was. Manziel would just roll around. Yeah, it was and sick. Throw it up to Mike Evans. <laughs> Manziel <laughs> go- and Mike Evans would always College. just come down with it. He was just yeah. I guess maybe not. I mean, I wasn't really studying film at that point. Maybe he's just like Zach Wilson, but uh, who I didn't have a first round grade on even. <laughs> so. He actually he maybe is I'm very just completely Zach capping, I, but the thing is, good Zach Wilson did that's it against call. like nobody's schools in the COVID year, and Manziel did it against Bama Manziel and like in, in the SEC. yeah, so it's a little different. It's a little different, but it's anyway, I digress. Um, but Dax, uh, but Zach Wilson brings me around to Dax Milne. <laughs> oh, I didn't even say Van guy. Jefferson. That's my fault. That's you I may be the world's Jefferson. biggest that's your Van guy. Jefferson fan outside of like his parents. <laughs> i don't even like parents. i don't like van jefferson that much i think that yeah, he's, he's good he's a I nice think he's receiver. like i don't trust him as a wide receiver too at all which i feel like a lot of people would but at any rate i got it i, I, and I, don't, I don't i don't feel that strongly about it I, I feel like i'm forgetting someone i i've said i've said dax milne darren fox you know lamar uh, Derek Carr. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't. I guess like you push agendas. You push Josh agendas Gordon. for the Josh Gordon. Players. None of us has said J.K. <laughs> Dobbins yet. I, oh, J.K. Dobbins. That's none like, of us have that's said, probably our collective favorite player. Maybe also a Raven. To, he's awesome. Maybe also a Raven. Again, fuck the. Ravens, I love the Ravens. They've got have they've got Kyle Hamilton and Bateman and Lamar They're and so J.K. Sick. Dobbins, and That's, it's like and I yeah, think I think what? yeah I think the Ravens are the what coolest is this? team. They are. I like Harbaugh. And it's fuck. It's like I, I'm rooting for the Ravens, man. As a Browns fan, I hate it here. Like why? They do have I... sick colors too. Their logo. Why do sick. I have to deal with this? Yeah, no. They're from Baltimore. Like their whole branding is cool. Baltimore. It's nah. They're from Cleveland. <laughs> shut up no they're not they're from baltimore <laughs> they're from cleveland man sort of this is this is they're like 
Josh Josh Gordon's another guy though. Uh, former Cleveland Brown, current Kansas City Chief. Sertan. You love Sertan. Uh, actually I do love Sertan, Pat Sertan. Um he's actually this is this episode will come out tomorrow, so I can tell you guys he's the next guy on my top one hundred. Fair. Um he, number eighty seven after Trayvon Diggs. I went three DBs in a row, I just realized, but I mean, Pat Sertan was an absolute freak last year. Lockdown was also, you know, making plays on the football. So, I mean, I mean, he had a pick six too, I think, didn't he? I could be wrong about yeah, that. Yeah, I think he had a pick I six. I think he did too. Um, I can't remember who was against though. But yeah, I think I think that's all my guys. Oh, actually, no. I another former Brown, Jordan Poyer, oh, yeah, safety you do for love the Bills. Jordan Poyer. Uh, I I love Jordan Poyer, and I was pissed when the Browns got rid of him. So I was like, that guy's good. And then him yeah, and Micah who the, Hyde who the Packers the let go when Micah football. Hyde was good. <laughs> I like any, like, I also like any, yeah. I've talked about superpowers. I like anybody who's just, like, a freak. Like, Derrick Henry's a freak. I, I love I like to watch Nick any. Chubb a lot. I like Nick Chubb, too. I, I, can, yeah. I can't yeah. say. And Josh Jordan, Allen's also on my, on my list. I love Josh Allen. Allen. Jordan Davis is going to be one just because, like, he's gigantic. Anyone who's just, like, oh, just looks like a freak out there. Any, any, I'm, I'm I like players of. who can do cool things that other players yeah. can't do. Yeah, like Derrick Henry and, and Tyreek <laughs> and Jordan Davis a little bit, although we haven't seen him in the NFL yet. But he's just, like, so freaking big. Vince Wilfork back in the day. Um, some of these just like massive, massive people. Jordan Milato is like. Six I'm surprised you didn't say Von Miller. Von's not one of my like. I like Von Miller, but he's not one of my like favorite. He, he's okay. crazy though. Okay. I think he's the best edge rusher of the 2010s, or like unless you count JJ Watt, I guess. So, but like the best like yeah. edge rushing linebacker, better than Khalil Mack and better than Chandler Jones. I think he's the best like yeah, whatever you want to say of the 2010s. So, anyway. Oh. I'm st- Jalen Hurts. Oh, that's what I'm yeah. forgetting. <laughs> My fucking guy, Jalen Hurts, future MVP of the league. Um, even though he ran, he so far is the worst score on your interceptions. Him and Tua, yeah. Your interceptions rank. It's not going to. They're tied. Oh, are yeah. they tied? That's okay, because I'm going from <laughs> least interceptions to most interceptions. So, obviously, the two with the okay. most interception so far which is hurts and two are going to be last you know so as i go on he's going to go nothing yeah. but up okay forward, so w love to see it but i think that pretty much wraps things up for us um man i'm looking at the standings else, from this year Sorry, as always one. oh and i've realized that like the bucks had 51 nah. wins this year the bucks had 51 wins what boston had 51 wins oh right Hornets 50 wins is maybe going to be hard, but I'm high on them. Don't quote me on that, but I'm high on them. They're going to be the two seed. They're going to be the I'm two seed in the that. East. They're going to, they're winning it all next year as far as I'm concerned, but. Their next year's Bengals. Um, didn't Except you hear? Bengals were worth they, but the Hornets at least made the playoffs. Next year's Bengals would be like the, the Kings being good or something like that. Darren yeah. Fox. He's Joe Burrow. <laughs> anyway. He's Joe Burrow. As always, tons and tons of content coming away on all platforms. We'll be back um on next or on for no, Thursday. I forget that we release on Thursdays now. Be back on Thursday. We have a live stream on Tuesday, NBA Live. Uh Theo's All Twenty Two comes out. Uh Matt has a video coming out. I'm working on a Josh Gordon video, but that might be a while. And uh yeah. My Matt Matt, how did did you watch my TikTok? On I, no, I played I with the Panthers it. in Madden. And uh I beat the Ravens by a bajillion points with Sam Darnold at quarterback. He was throwing dots. I just thought that would make you feel good. It means a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to I, I, I was like I got the Panthers and I was like, this one's for Matt. Thank you. <laughs> and I and I got the W in your name, so you're welcome. But as always from Corn Boy, Bird Boy, and Lemon Boy, we will catch you all on the flipping